Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? How's practice today? Uh, practice was great. You know, you just keep working and get better. But uh, it's a good day, productive day. Coach, you know the question is coming. The quarterback room, the quarterback, everything the de development-wise. Who's starting to really show that they're grasping this offense and starting to pick it up and carry it through? I think from you know top to bottom, I think all four guys have really done a nice job. And um, you know, since the last time I talked to you guys, we've made steps in the right direction. So I think that's what you're looking for. Um, we've exposed them to a lot. You know, our defense is very multiple, so you couple those things together. Um, but I've been pleased with the progress, and still a lot of work to be done. You know, just just simple execution um, that. You know, when you're learning a system, you, know, you become more and more comfortable with each and every day. But I've been pleased with the group. What have you seen from Emmanuel Henderson out here today? I mean, last year's season cut short, but clearly he has a lot of ability about him. Yeah, extremely fast and a great attitude. Hardworking kid that loves football and shows up ready to go each and every day. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're pleased with where Eman is. And um, like the rest of the guys, you know, we're, we're, we are a work in progress. Um, but we're pleased with the um, effort. Um, you know, they're working each and every day to create the habits that we're looking to see in practice. Um, and they embrace that and they take coaching. And so um, the things that we ask them to do better, they do better. And so that's what you're really looking for. And certainly E-Man's been great. With about a week left to practice, how important is the evaluation piece of it, knowing that the portal's right there on the other side and things can change in a hurry, you need to kind of know where you are? I don't think that, that the evaluation of your players has anything to do with that window. I, I appreciate the question. I understand why you're asking that. I think we're always trying to find ways to help the players. And so as you evaluate where they're at, um, you try to meet them there and try to help them get better. And so that's an ongoing process with all of our players each and every day. You know, there's constant evaluation, constant feedback. That's really important to coach, really important to us, that the players know where they stand and they know how they can improve. You know, I think um, as a player, I think that's what you're hoping to get as a, as a, out of a coach is that they'll tell you where you're at and how you can improve and get better. And so uh, that evaluation is ongoing regardless of you know, what's on the road. Coach Womack indicated, didn't indicate, he said that in the scrimmage that uh, – he thought his team and his players had been mostly involved with pass because the install is mostly pass, and they got hurt pretty good by the run. Uh, is that the way you saw it? or I don't know if I saw it quite that way. <laughs> I think spring ball has been extremely competitive. You know, I think there's been moments where probably both sides of the ball walk off the practice field, um, you know, <laughs> knowing there's work to be done. And so um, I can't. You know, not, I will say this, we have a phenomenal staff of both sides. And so that challenge each and every day um, makes us better as coaches, certainly challenges the players, but top to bottom, both sides of the ball, this is an expert staff that, um, you know, is helping our team get better because of what you got to go against, you know, both technically and schematically. So, um, you know, Kane's doing a phenomenal job, and, and the rest of the defensive staff is as well. It's very, very competitive. What was the challenge when Jalen Hale went down, and just what sort of players replace his skill set in that room? You know, we just really focus on him, you know, and how we can be there to support him, you know. So, um, you know, we want to do everything to surround him with love and support um, because he's a great kid. And so that's really what our focus has been on. What sort of opportunities is it open for other players in that room when you have the reps available in the spring? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, um, you know, there's reps, reps to be had, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that that's been the message to the guys. It's been more to love and support Jalen. There's been multiple reports about Parker not being in practice. Can you kind of tell us where he's at and what's going on with him right now? Yeah, I, I certainly appreciate the question. I'll, I'll let Coach kind of, you know, handle just player availability and, and where things stand. And I'm pretty sure he's talking to you guys here the next day or so. So I'll let Coach handle that. Coach, with the tight end room. Um, who's starting to emerge as leaders, but also who's showing like that that it factor in that room that's going to be able to step in early? Yeah, I think it's been very competitive. You know, I think there's experience there, um, and so I think those guys are are learning the system and trying to carve out their role. It's a, I wouldn't say that each guy is the same. You know, there's some versatility in the room. I think each player is a little bit different, and so um, I, I've I've been pleased with. The physicality in the C and D gap, it's a big room. You know, these are 250 plus, 260 pound guys. That's not totally, you know, normal, honestly. You know, there's some uniqueness in size. There's some uniqueness in body control. 
um, ball skills. And so each guy's a little bit different. You guys are out there, you know, you see them. They're different body types. But what we're trying to do with as along with all the other players is expose them to the system, expose them to the scheme, and then as we get through spring practice, try to identify what each guy does best and put them in those positions. If you could just talk real quick about the running backs, uh, Justice Haynes, Jack Miller, even Richard Young, what you've seen from them so far. Good. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, really good. You know, I think it's a very competitive room, but I also think there's um, some unselfishness there. And recognition that in this league, as physical as it is, that you need, you know, more than one person to be able to carry the ball competitively and tough. And I think everybody knows, um, even you know, here that historically there's been multiple guys that have contributed and helped. And uh, we're anticipating the same because, you know, there's there's guys that deserve to touch the ball, um, and have shown that you know throughout the course of spring. A couple more. How would you describe? Coach, you were mic'd up at practice, uh, joking with the quarterbacks about you know their baseball background with Dylan and Todd. Was I? I, I didn't. How was the mic'd up? I didn't get it. It was, it was good. It was um, good. Would you, you tell me if it wasn't good though? Yeah. Okay. How would you describe your like, coaching style, especially with the quarterbacks? Like, what do you try to do? For those? You know, I try to be what they need. You know, I think that's for all of us as coaches. I think each individual player, um, you know, you're genuine to who you are. You know, you don't, you know, think about how you're going to respond or react, but you try to be there to help them. And hopefully above else, you know, you're teaching them how to play the game the way that you want them to play. And so, you know, we, we, we place, place a priority on teaching, you know, and so hopefully they would say that, you know, they feel like they're getting better and being taught and uh, improving. And certainly I see that in their play. Um, but the players will probably be a good, good to ask on what my coaching style is. <laughs> Yeah. Think they tell us the truth? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I think they would. No, but no. Those kids would. They would tell you. So. Got another philosophy question. Uh, just big picture tempo. What, what do you think? What's the philosophy of trying to use tempo? And then, how far along are they in terms of being able to meet that with their understanding of the offense right now? Yeah, I think we're a ways away as far as mastering the pace in which we want to play with. But that's um, we try to vary the pace. You know, um, people ask that often. You know, like. You know, do you want to go fast? Do you want to go slow? We want to win the game. You know, and so I think offense's job is to help the team win the game because we can manage that. You know, that's one difference between offense and defense is certainly, you know, the management of the clock and the pace in which you go and what's going on in the game, you know, ahead, behind, you know, what happened the previous series with the defense. You know, what's, you know I think there's a lot of factors that go into that, um, and we want to do whatever we can to win the game. And so we've, we, uh, we've always varied the tempo. Um, we have the ability to go as fast as possible. We have the ability to slow down. And so we try to, you know, use the, the um, you know, strategy that helps us win. Speaking of tempo, Alabama's yeah. basketball team plays tomorrow night. Um, your thoughts on the basketball team and thoughts about Nate Oates and his overall mentality? Yeah, it's, it's actually crazy because Coach Oates was at Rhymeless High School, which is like 20 minutes from where I went to high school. I actually... He wouldn't know this. I haven't had a chance to say hi to him or, or meet him yet. But um, I went and watched him coach at Romulus High School. Yeah, they played Ipsy High. Um, there was a good left-handed – Romulus was loaded. Coach probably knows that. They had a great team. It was kind of like a big deal. They were playing Ipsy High. Ipsy had a left-handed point guard that was a really good player. So it was like a big deal for even local high school kids to go watch. Um, I was a third baseman, so I don't know why I went to the basketball game. But I <laughs> – I took a look at it, but I think it's been impressive. You know, I think um, we're behind him. I mean, it's been fun to watch. You know, we used Grant Nelson. You know, we used him in our unit meeting the other day and talking about how, you know, we talk about a one and no mentality, you know, and for him to come through like he did against UNC, I think was amazing. I think we all would agree with that, you know. So um, we're pulling hard for him. Um, and, you know, it's been fun to watch. And what a great job Coach has done and the staff and, most importantly, the players. I mean, Sears was lights out, boys. I mean, it was unbelievable, right? I mean, it's crazy, right? So um, we're, we're right behind them and, and wish them the best of luck. Is the right. second scrimmage a ch change in structure or just a continuation? Should be similar. Yeah, we'll try to get as many plays as we can, and, and Coach kind of sets that, but should be similar.